Hello! In this video we'll start to see the response of a dynamical system with an external force acting on it. We will use the same schematic drawing with a block with mass m moving in the horizontal direction with some stiffness k and some damping c attached to it. And now there's also an external force, generically just an f uh, depending on time, attached to this block. So first, let's try to see how the equations of motion look like. We'll start from the same principle that the sum of forces in this direction equals mass times the acceleration in this same direction. The stiffness force and the damping force is the same as we seen before, so they'll be uh, opposite to the positive direction of motion. And now we have this external force applied on the block as well, so that comes here as it is pointing the same direction of x, it is positive in this equation, and that equals then mass times acceleration. If we rearrange terms a bit, we'll see the classical equation of motion for this uh, one degree of freedom with external force acting on the block. Now we need to define exactly what is the form of this function here for the force, for the external force, in order to analyze the motion. In this generic form here is just an f of t, but it can assume any form. So a very classical uh, form of this external force is a harmonic excitation in the form as shown here with an amplitude f0 and uh, cosine of omega t, so this omega is the frequency of the excitation force. If we have this force defined such as this expression, we would simply use this expression here in our equation. And now our equation will look something like this. We substitute that generic f of t by this f0 cosine, cosine of omega t. From here we can use similar methods as we have used before in the previous videos to find the solution for this differential equation. And I can show you here briefly what is the form of this uh, solution. It looks something like this. It's a very long expression as this uh, x0, phi0, zero, x and phi uh, has some other expressions for them. I have a file here on Octave with this expression already typed in. It's here in line 19. You can check that there's the same expression as in here. So this is the uh, response of our system. This is the displacement x as function of time. And as I mentioned, these other uh, terms here, they have expressions of their own. So this capital X uh, is given by this expression here in line 16 and this phi is given by this expression here in line 17. So take a moment now to pause the video and copy these into your own file so we can start looking at the response of the system. It is important to observe here in this expression line 19 that there are basically two terms here. This first part which is related to an exponential, so it is the damping of the uh, initial response given by the initial conditions. And this second part of the uh, expression is given by the uh, response due to the forcing. As you see, both of these parts, they depend on parameters of the system itself. So we have mass, stiffness and damping and parameters of the force. We have here the amplitude and the frequency of the force in, uh, in both parts. So uh, if we define all these parameters, so if we use the same values we've been using for, for m, k and c, and we say that this force has an amplitude of 1 newton and a frequency of 5 uh, radians per second, and here I'm just giving the initial conditions in uh, capital X 0 and phi 0. And again we're defining an uh, interval in time in which we're going to see the response, so here between 0 and 20 seconds. And again in these expressions we make use of those uh, dimensional for, uh, parameters, the natural frequency, omega n, 
the damping factor, uh, the Greek letter zeta, and the damped natural frequency, the omega d. This uh, measures we've seen before. So if we have uh, our uh, file like so with all the parameters defined and the expressions here, uh, we can look into this uh, response which uh, will be something similar to this figure. In this figure we can see again two uh, different parts of this response. We can see here that there's an initial transient response uh, where the system is uh, adapting to this new condition of the forcing and after this the system settles into some oscillation with a fixed amplitude and a fixed frequency. We call these two parts of the response the transient response which is this initial part and the steady state response which is what happens from uh, here after. And we can relate these two parts of the response, the transient and the steady state response, to these two terms uh, in the expression uh, that gives us x uh, as a function of t. If we look here at this first part, uh, as t goes by this first term uh, decays um, and vanishes from the equation. And this is related to this initial transient response here. It's very strong in the beginning, but after some time it's not uh, influencing the response anymore. And as time uh, takes higher values, what stays in our equation is this term here, so we can relate that to the steady state response. And we'll see later that this uh, capital X here is be, uh, will be our amplitude in steady state uh, response, and we can focus our uh, analysis on this part here of the expression as we are usually interested in the uh, steady state part of the response of a system. So now with these expressions as they are it's uh, interesting if you can change some of the parameters of the system and of the force and you can see what's going on with the response. So Pay attention, for example, that the amplitude of the response it is influenced by all the parameters, both from the system, uh, mass, stiffness and damping, and from the forcing, the amplitude of the force, which is a bit obvious, but also the frequency. So if you change the frequency, you can change the amplitude of the uh, steady state response. So give it a try. Try change a few uh, numbers here. See if you can understand a bit what's going on with your system.